Now, today's decision by the Health Secretary to order an urgent review into the dangers of breast implants has shone a light on a largely unregulated industry, but also one that is growing and growing fast. In 2010, more than 38,000 surgical procedures were carried out in the UK, and that's an increase of 5%. By far the most popular operation was breast augmentation, with 10,000 women opting to go under the knife. But almost 4,000 men also signed up for operations, a quarter for male breast reductions. And many clinics now offer some rather dub dubious incentives like buy one, get one free offers on the procedure and other pretty aggressive marketing strategies. Many experts say there are gaping holes in the rules covering the sector, with an estimated 70% of clinics effectively unregulated. And yet, despite the risks, it seems we just can't get enough of it. Well, joining me in the studio now is the Guardian journalist, journalist Zoe Williams and uh, Zoe Talbot uh, from Birmingham, who had to have her breast implant removed after it ruptured. Well, Zoe Williams, Simon Cowell says that Botox is no more unusual than toothpaste. Is that true? Um... I think that's probably not strictly true. Uh, you know, the classic feminist argument about this would be that this would that this kind of signalled a, a disparity between the sexes, that men decided a body shape for women which was unattainable for most women, and then women mutilated themselves in order to achieve it. Now, I don't think that... I think the picture is a lot more complicated than that. I don't think it is a very common procedure. I think it is still a very major procedure, which a lot of people would feel squeamish about, but I don't really think it's about gender war as such or even a, a kind of power struggle between the genders because as you say men going under the knife are you know more men are going under the knife every year as well and it seems to be much more about competition and people trying to kind of maximize their endowments in a kind of unequal playing field than it is about you know, female empowerment or a lack of thereof. I'll come back to the issue of men okay. in a moment, but yeah. uh, Zoe, Zoe Talbot, why, why do this? Uh, why, what's wrong with natural beauty? Um, uh, nothing at all. Nothing's wrong with natural beauty. Um, I just wasn't happy with the way that I looked uh, before. Um, and it's a procedure that I didn't go into lightly. Um, I looked into and researched a lot um, and just wanted to feel more confident and more feminine about myself. Well, Zoe Williams, though, what, let's come back to that issue of men. Um, the figures about so-called move jobs, breast reduction yeah, surgery, I, I think a 28% rise in that. So it is no longer about women making themselves attractive to men, is it's it? It's not really about... Well, I mean, it is still overwhelmingly female, we've got to admit that. But the, the, the male figures are going up. And if you look at the American data, we don't have very good data, which is part of the reason why the government wants regulation in the, data, in the area of data. But the American data is quite telling. Um, there seems to, it, it seems to be, A, first of all, only half breast um, cosmetic surgery is for purely cosmetic reasons. There are an awful lot of other things which, you, you know, like asymmetry and um, congenital lack of or a breast. Post -surgery. Or post-surgery. Or post-surgery. So it, it is a bit flippant to talk about all of it as a kind of mutilation in, in the search of an ideal. A lot of it is just a pure kind of physical problem which is sorted out by surgery and that's a different matter altogether. In terms of the people who do have it done cosmetically, um, 75% of women, just as this was before the economic crash, um, who had breast in enlargements were earning less than $25,000. And the, the, uh, the procedure was costing $3,000, so a lot of it was on credit cards, and that was the first industry to crash following the financial crash. Zoe, Zoe Talbot, obviously you've had problems with your implant, but was it worth the cash? Did it change your life initially? Um, uh, well, yeah, because I felt more confident about myself. My, my, I wouldn't say my life changed dramatically, but I was a, I was a more confident person. Uh, I felt more feminine. I could wear different clothes. I felt more confident when I went on holiday and put a bikini on. So it didn't change my life dramatically, but I'm pleased that I had it done. So would you have further work done? I mean, where do you stop? Uh, well, I, I, I am actually having the implants uh, changed again in April because I'm not happy with them. So, yes, I am having them done again. Um, I, I, I wouldn't probably take it any further than that. Uh, the reason that I'm having them done now is just because I'm not happy. But is that uh, for I a did... health reason, because they've ruptured or...? No, it's not. They ruptured. Uh, they ruptured uh, early. Uh, we found the rupture early last year, and I had them changed uh, last summer. Um, I didn't expect them to be exactly the same as they looked before, um, uh, and they didn't. But they, uh, I, I wasn't happy with them. Went back to see my surgeon, and he was happy to change them again for me. Um, but there's a certain amount of time that it has to be left before they can be done again.
So, Zoe Williams, what, as a feminist, what's OK and what's not? I mean, you shave your armpits, you know, you get your teeth straightened, but you don't have a breast implant. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to talk for all feminists, because there is still a feminist orthodoxy that says any surgery is a complete... is self-harm, and... I can see that, I can see that point. And furthermore, you know, in a feminist utopia or a socialist utopia or any kind of utopia, nobody would need to get surgery. They would, you know, everybody would be... Nobody would be competing to be the ideal of their gender. You know, not everybody can be their gender ideal, whatever cultural ideal that is. And it's a shame, in a way, that everybody feels like that they're prepared to damage themselves in order to do that. But I wouldn't look at it, I wouldn't look at it as a feminist. I would look at it much more politically sorry. and say... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we're, sorry, we're at complete out of time, but thank you very much for coming in. And Zoe Talbot, too, thank you.